Tristana liking the takeaway here. Corky is also up. Maybe you take both. Maybe oh. there's a world where you do. I mean, I feel like it's one or the other. If you do go Corky, though, Tristana far more likely, if JDG want to snap that one up, can and go AP jungler and then look to round out their, their comp with the frontliners, right? In that next rotation, wouldn't be a bad option. So JDG, probably pretty happy with this Ash opening. EDG have that yeah. Corky. Now it's about what exactly they want to pair with it, whether it's jungler, whether it's support. We saw a lot of early support rotations in the last drafts on that. Uh, red side. Ezreal. Some poke, though. To match yeah. some of that range, yeah. You gotta get some poke on your side if you're gonna go with the style of composition for EDG. The thing I love about this Ash is not only is it flexible for JDG, but last time we saw Ruler on this Ash, it was one of the best Ash performances I've seen in I don't even know how long. The man was literally just the game definer in the late game with his Enchanted Crystal Arrows. We'll see if that's going to be the case this time around. They're going to take full priority in mid lane. My God, how have JDG gotten all these picks? The Nidalee comes through with that Tristana. That Nidalee, Tristana, Ash. Pretty scary. Even more in the context in of knowing game? that it's Kanavi, <laughs> knowing it's Kanavi, Yagao, and Ruler piloting them. EDG are going to have their hands full, but they've got decent answers. All right, especially if they look in this Zyra. I'd say it's it's kind of difficult to invade Zyra. She's almost always going to be full HP. Mm. And, uh, of course, Zyra just has to hold on to Strangle Thorns, and it's, it's very difficult to play around that as the Nidalee, just because of the play pattern of, you know, diving in, right? So we'll see how things play out. EDG, a lot of poke. JDG, a lot of, well, mostly kind of front-to-back damage, right? DPS between Tristan, uh, Ash, strong side laning from that Tristana, poke. And of course, utility from that Nidalee later on. Engage being removed away now by EDG, though. They want that rail gone. Yeah. And a TF ban. I wonder if they're <laughs> going to start setting up potentially like for a Cassante for shit. Both of the uh, top laners here have been very proficient TFs. Uh, I, I, There was two ways this went. We were going to get early priority on uh, supports, or we were going to get counter pick supports. It looks like we might be leaning that way here. We'll see what the top lane matchup will end up being or if that gets whittled down a little bit more as well because it is really important to kind of take away some of the uh, comfort picks from both these sides, especially as new and developing top laners. It is the cannon towards Sheer, so taking away some of the team fight potential there. Yeah, definitely are. But again, I feel like JDG... I mean, maybe EDG won't Cassante now. That'll be my best guess. Take that away and then put Sheer on something slightly different. Oh, wow. All right. So they go for the Jackson. I mean, not bad. All things considered, you know, double uh, double AD carry, side laner, interstana. I feel like Jax can definitely make her life very, very difficult handling those side lanes. So Sheer, I think in the end, we'll probably still land on this Cassante. We know how the lane matchup works. It's been practically the, you know, the go-to of old when Cassante first came into the meta last year. As now JDG, I mean, honestly, Braun Blind? It's not the worst thing in the world when you've got Ash yeah. next to it. And the Trist. It's not too yeah. shabby. It also gives you a little bit of onus in the lane. And again, I just think giving a guy like Ruler with the brain that he has the enchanted Crystal Arrow in late game against, not gonna lie, a pretty squishy comp by EDG. It just feels like a death sentence, but we'll see how all the execution works out in front of that. And EDG are going to need something from Wink here to really set them up for wow. success. And it's going to be a Rakan. Okay, so I'll be honest, Mazel, I'm not super sold of the EDG's draft right now. More in the context of looking over and seeing what EDG have, because, or JDG have rather. Pryo in the bottom side, probably Pryo through mid. Top is going to be a bit wishy-washy. But Kanavi is going to know exactly where to go, and it's going to be down to this bottom side, right? You're almost always going to have priority. You're always going to have skirmishing pressure and prior because of the concussive blows and how easy those are to stack up. Either you have their work cut out for them because they're weighing, you know, two items at least for crying and leave. Maybe solo kill can make things start to happen once he gets that first item under his belt. But even then, you know, into Cassante, such a nullifying pick. This game is going to be a hard one for them to pilot. And JDG, I feel like they've got all the tools in the early game to get the ball rolling. FPX already handled their business. Now all eyes on EDG as the last matchup in this group kicks off here in the first phase of LPL Summer. 
It's JDG who are already clear and above the favorites, and they will be on into the Ascend group of the next round. But EDG, they are fighting tooth and nail. They need a win against JDG, the titans of Group A, to secure themselves that golden ticket to the next round. But it's all down to this jungle matchup. It's all down to Kanavi, who has had a revenge split to dream of here in the jungle for JDG versus JJ, the sole remaining star carving member for EDG's world championship. We're getting into game one now in JDG's home arena. Let's hear those Jios. Couldn't quite hear which side the Jios were for. <laughs> All I know is Jai was just leave hat. them ambiguous, all right? <laughs> Everybody gets shoes. Still one of the best things you get to experience, I feel like, in these sports. Level one? Chant. As a, yeah, one of the worst things you can experience is a level one against Bromash in League of Legends. Oh, Not wait, EDG? Okay, they were moving their bot lane up. I was like, maybe they wrap around? Oh, my God. Uh, but nothing else going to come of it. So JDG, we're just trying to catch them out a little bit early, but not going to really find too much. Do get a little bit of vision on that side of the map now. They're going to have to be a bit careful moving to their side of the jungle. Yeah, leave getting the damage numbers in early. Ooh, all right, well, second Mystic shot onto Kanavi. I was wondering whether or not they were going to go for a late invade there onto the blue buff. But frankly, you know, again, the problem is Zyra clears so quick that... uh. Yeah, it's not really a good trade, as we saw play out in that previous game. Or the previous series, because I think it was game one where that map split happened. So uh, just junglers farming from red, likely going to fall clear. We'll see if Kanavi decides to, you know, do three camps into maybe some kind of bot shenanigans, but I just don't know if it's really worth yeah. the risk of it all. I think more so what we're looking at is, yes, the side eye on jungle, JJ will be spotted out here, but how quickly Wink and Missing can get out of their lane and onto the map and uh, what that laning phase has to offer in that regard. But it will be that opposite side pathing like we are seeing here. So very important to kind of keep tabs on when those paths will come to completion. A little bit of push from a classic Tristana for Yagao is going to be the name of the game here. And that's why we've seen this pick kind of be the pick of the meta. Exactly. So consistent at what it does. This Tristana. Almost every single lane matchup. Early shove. Scales well into the late game. Good team fighter front to back. Good side laner. Excellent side laner, really. What doesn't it do super well? <laughs> it's really the question. The answer is not that much. <laughs> As a full clear. 2 minutes 58 seconds for GAG. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we'll I think like, the though. most optimized one is, is about 10 seconds faster. And uh, even if he was 10 seconds faster, he'd just be waiting a little bit longer to make this dive happen. <laughs> so, uh, they've got they the space shoved in. Level 3 is a while away. Right, they're going to try to get a little bit of poke damage in early. Nice oh. double grasp there. They're going to get the TP in from JDG and immediately pull off. Really nice reservation from EDG. Because they're now going to get the jump forward from Yagao. Nothing else going to come of it. Couple summoner spells burned and one returned by EDG. Oh, they're getting yep. collapsed on. They are. It's a fight. Smite's going to go over to GG. Oh, Kanavi. Kanavi. Tries to pounce out, but does get knocked up by the grand entrance. Wink able to get out, doing a decent chunk to Kanavi in the end. Primal Surge going to heal him right back up, though. We go to the other side of the map for more tussling. <laughs> what I say exactly. about the bot lanes, man? <laughs> Missing's walking up there. Wink's walking up there. Oh, Missing's turned around. They want to play mid, maybe. It's a bit awkward. I mean, they'll probably lose this skull. Actually, Kanavi doesn't have smite. So, obviously, neither does JJ, but you would have thought Kanavi had one from earlier. Picked up. JJ gets double skull. Missing. This, this, see, this this is the game. Jungle, jungle everything. <laughs> I, want, I want double skull. I want all of my camps. Me, 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 me. But uh, right. it's a small lead acquired for JJ. I, I love to see it, man. We knew it was going to be a jungle tussle and how quickly the influence from the team was going to help these two guys out. So far, so good for EDG. I even saw just a little catch out. 
Kanavi correcting himself in his seat as he went back to farm. Just saying maybe the bro's locked in now, but we'll see JJ getting the better of him so far. A CS lead for EDG in the jungle, but objectives are coming up soon, and Dragon will be first and foremost. Yeah, Kanavi was mad about losing those two skulls, so now he's bro's locked in. He's ready. But I do agree, those objectives coming up, obviously Dragon's up now, Grub's up in just under a minute's time. I do wonder where GG is going to want to put his priority. He's actually gone Sork Boots first. Over the Faded Ashes. I quite like this. Early junglers like this. I think Brand is another champion where if you don't go Magical Footwear in your runes, it's not bad. You just get all that extra movement speed, right? And that will attack range. All that good stuff in the early game, that's super important. That movement speed really helps you get to those places in time. Magic Pen's obviously nice as well. Damage is damage. But again, priority in these lanes. Going to continue to be battled out for. I feel like EDG... I can see this just being a, a pretty clear Dragon for Grub trade just because of where the junglers are at the minute. <laughs> carvey has got two camps on the top side that he's got to clean up. JJ has finished up both his bottom side camps, so if he wants to go up to Grubs, he can. But I feel like this is... I mean, this is just kind of the priority that teams have on Grubs, right? Because yeah. obviously they are so powerful. You'd prefer not to give them up. EDG could have happily handshook this first dragon for it. But they're here to contest anyway. Let's see where the smite goes. I actually get a little bit of contest coming out. JJ will hit level 6 off that. That's huge. Kanavi not really close to it either. So EDG going to use this level advantage potentially to move over. Did not get the trade just yet because they reset. And JDG maybe rethinking their engage potential here. Sheer does have level 6 himself. Kanavi's going to step up, but the vision will end up being cleared out. A little bit vision game being played here by EDG and JDG. Going to try to move more bodies over here. The Grubs have just been back and forth. Oh. <laughs> no. Kanavi's aye, like, aye, man, aye. I just can't get these aye, Grubs. Aye, aye. Yeah, not only that, not to be a harsh critic, but I think Kanavi's been smiting his camps a lot because he showed up to Grubs with no smite. And it's not the first time he showed up to... I suppose an objective, if we want to count that skull from earlier, ooh, ooh, as Ruler. Ooh. Ruler stepping up and to leave. He's going to miss the true ooh. shot barrage. Ruler tanking some damage from the minions there, but looking to step up and show leave who's boss. Now Yagao getting tested by crying in the mid lane. Going to get traded pretty heavily by that explosive charge. Now Kanavi, he's looking for the spear on to leave. He's going to get that shift out. Gets the shift out. Go back to base. Very, very clean. Good trade from Ruler. Gets himself a play as well. Solo, no less. Leaf just couldn't quite match up to that early damage. And I mean, that's to be expected. Ash into Ezreal. You've got to weave your damage in quite efficiently as this Ezreal on that side of the matchup to really match up to the early DPS that Ash can put out. But three grubs kind of happened off screen. Of course, because we were focusing on that 1v1 down there. Go over to EDG. JDG don't even really get a trade anywhere on the map when you think about it. So it's not bad at all. And JJ is actually making a bit of a venture up into the top side. Whether or not he's making a top play, wants camps. Pings are coming up. Into oh, the he's definitely going for sheer, a top play. So <laughs> he wants that play. And honestly, he should have it. Sheer might be being punished in the side here. Gets locked down. Tries to all out. Out of the Stranglethorn. Whoa. Dashes out and flash out. That's Cassante for you. Go ahead and clip that. One of those Cassante moments in many ways. Very frustrating champion to lock down. And uh, yeah, don't quite have that chain CC available to lock him down. And that top play is going to cost JJ a little bit of his lead. We'll lose the blue buff. Could very well lose his Grump as well. And I think JJ's he finally got around, a read on that. Yeah. He just turned around immediately going into that top side. I wonder if she is going to try and defend his camps for him. But he's oh. got a wave up there. That's the problem. Leave. Leave. He gets no tagged. Cleanse. Here comes the spear, Kanavi with those cougar claws. I told you, you can't turn and run from a cougar. Oh, They'll no. get you all day long. And that will be first blood over to JDG. Well aimed by Rula. I mean, this is why it's such a high priority pick for them. Yep. He's so damn good at the pick. And they're just continuing to extend this lead down here. Almost 1,000 gold. He's probably going to get another plate. Life is feeling pretty good for JDG down here on this bottom side. EDG, I mean, the only real point of promise had been the fact that JJ had been doing so well in a lot of these jungle exchanges, but even that kind of dwindles a little bit when Kanavi finds the play off the back of this well-placed oh, arrow man. from Ruler, and it's just this vision. It's the vision that he gets 
off of Kanavi. No cleanse available from Lee. Had Leave. Flash. Yeah, I mean, that's the big thing, right? He has flash. You've got to flash it. Yeah, You've that's got to flash that. But I, I just want to take a second to geek out because I, I don't do it often. But man, when we get jungle matchups like this, it really is a pleasure. Uh, I think Kanavi and JJ have represented the pillars of I feel like what it means to be a dominant LPL jungler, and we're seeing them go toe to toe here, and it's been really nice to see so far in this split. Both these guys having Renaissance like performances. But uh, I think in this one particularly, a little bit of pride on the line here, too, as they've both been staples for their organizations. JJ, five years in running. Kanavi, four years in running for their respective teams. Exactly. Team captains in many ways, aren't they both? JJ and Kanavi. As a JDG. They do call him General Kanavi. They do call him General for a reason. Team captains, the you know, it's not just a paintball. The, title, <laughs> the, title, the titles don't really matter. <laughs> the titles don't really matter. Though, uh, if anything, who would Kanavi's, you know, if Kanavi's the general, right? Who's the captain? Oh, it's either missing or you go 100% with the, the vibes captains. I, I feel like it'd be missing with a lot of the offseason content you see, missing takes a heavy voice and kind of like, uh, like ca calling into question a lot of things and. You know, having a lot of conversations, so it's been really fun to watch. I'm sure he would be somewhere close to that. Now, Ruler looking for oh. a play, though, and maybe looking to be his second in command. <laughs> Just get the dodge out of crying. He's got, he's a, he's a corgi, you know, he's got fast feet. But uh, those grubs will end up going all the way JDG's way, so they'll get all the way to three themselves. Not bad. Split that up, make sure there's no uh, void mites as well. Not bad. And then just for clarification, though, does that make your gal the lieutenant? Missing is, of course, the captain. Is Maybe. that how that works? Is that the chain of command? Mm, Kanavi missing Yagao. Yagao's like the vibe bro, the uncle that you go to, you know, that you want to, like, maybe not say to the general. He just, mm. the, the, he's the vibes captain. Like he, he, he's the vibes yeah, he, captain. He, 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 lets, he lets the bad stuff happen as long as it's in good spirit, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the, the, <laughs> the non disciplined stuff, he, yeah, he lets that go. All right, I, I like that. I like that. Oh, no. think about it. it is all oh. the way bot lane. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Gotta love those errant oh. ash arrows. But again, I, last time we saw this pick by Ruler, it was so incredibly strong in finding those picks. And we're starting to get to that mid game, and that CC is going to be off cooldown all the time. But let's take a look at those entrances that both teams can have. A lot of AoE for EDG, but also a lot of poke to enter these objectives, while JDG, they need to stick and fight. That's kind of going to be the difference maker, I think, between both of these two teams. EDG, it's so awkward running this kind of composition where a lot of you, the, you know, the damage component is really a poke component, but then you've got two champions that really want to dive in and get things going, but they have to pounce on the damage that's actually put down by Crying and Leave. Now, oh, flash comes flash out from JJ. Out. And again, Ruler's just proving to provide so much pressure with this Ash. Without the arrow, though, I wonder how much space EDG actually have. Whether or not they can actually make their way back in. I just feel like, again, Braum, Ash, the rundown, so difficult to play into. Oof. Good spear there into Wink. Solo kill. So hard for EDG to approach. Solo kill was trying to back. Uh, ended up stopping it because he realized it would be a really losing play with all this. And another plate goes over to Sheer. He has had a massive advantage up in topside. They both have TPs. So we could be looking at a play around these objectives. And I think both teams read that and kind of back off. Now, Yagao, he was waiting around the corner there, utilizing the vision to try to take down Kryon. He's not going to go under turret here to follow him up. But Kryon ends up burning his flash. Very happy to take that trade. As now Sheer. Oh, no, Sheer. <laughs> oh, it was so nice. Caught twice this time. You don't got Cassante. Thanks to get you out of it. Solo kill will take him out. It was so nice. JDG. Unfortunately, watch ADG, EDG not let him do it twice. As now JDG will get this bottom tier tower. Tier 1 tower, rather. It's only one dragon, though. 14 minutes in, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Solo kill's going to recoup some of that gold that was being lost. Very passively through the plates. And those very incremental demolish procs will get this whole tower to himself. Goodness. That should just about close up the gold difference between those two top laners, I think. That was a thousand gold in turret plates to 250 on JDG's favor there. That's kind of, kind of crazy. Now EDG continuously being proactive though with this Zyra jungle. 
We'll end up getting the Rift Herald. Ooh, another arrow. It's going to find JJ in transition. Nice block by Wink with the double grain interest. Wow. This man is doing everything, but JJ's health bar is saying, no, I got to go. And Yagao's trying to chase him down. The Buster shot will get him the reset. He's not going to chase any further as the Arcane Shift came out from leave over the wall. But JDG, they strike true. This is just such a such a fantastic performance so far from Ruler on this Ash. Anytime the arrow's up, it just feels like he's throwing it out, looking for a play. Yep. And I love this from JDG, the coordination to just continually look around the map for it. I think Leave is probably going to walk up and stop this base. Ooh, just short. <laughs> Half a second. A little close. But again, JJ called out. Didn't have Flash this time. Of course, Flash the last one. Again, just these, like, drops of vision everywhere. Looking for this play and information. As now they're looking for Yagao. Has Flash. But no turret. <laughs> so, yeah. um has a long way to run is not oh. gonna buffer the grand entrance the counter strike comes out you got gets killed a tp from sheer a little bit too late but maybe looking for more as wink's health bar is not very high all out comes through those in tofus hit strong oh, the and the turret falls he's still got the damage to tick up and sheer goes forward now ruler not gonna follow up as he does not have the arrow just yet but sheer making a big redemption play on top side Solo kill got very fortunate that Sheer just was very sh shy on those <laughs> Edtofo strikes. Because if he connected them, got those slows with the Iceborne Gauntlet, I think that could have very easily been a chase down onto the Jax as well. Not bad there. But, uh, JDG, find another play. EDG, crying. We'll pick up this tower down here on the bottom side and claw back some of the gold differential between him and Yagao. Of course, I have to remember... The uh, Triforce, a very, very expensive item, and there's three of them on EDG. <laughs> yeah. EDG very, is subscribed uh, to the League of Triforce here. They're actually going to try to subscribe topical. to the League of Takedown Sheer multiple times in the game. He does not have a little... Uh, actually, yeah, okay, I mean, that, that fourth one is okay. not going to be enough. <laughs> I was like, it's a, it, he might still have an exit but the, as soon as Wink comes over uh -oh. the top. Now, Leave just might die in mid lane. Not going to find the spear. Ends up getting the arcane shift away. That's Rift Herald and bot side. A tempo play by EDG as they take down Sheer. And they're able to take down a tier 2 tower here as well. Yeah. All right. EDG. Finding some nice openings on the map to, at the very least, oh, answer out. <laughs> Wink's going to ride the Herald out for fun. Passenger <laughs> princess. <laughs> That's what that is. We're going driving today, Wink. He doesn't even technically... He doesn't even take the Herald out of the different lane, by the way. He just rides all the way back. <laughs> just delaying it, so it's more annoying. Yeah, exactly. We'll get taken out by Kadavi by the looks of the minimap. And uh, we return to a map state where a dragon is just over a minute away. And as we take a, a kind of a... I want to take a quick step back, look at the items, because Yagao, pretty close to that second item. Might have it on this reset, he does. And rule up. In all fairness, with that 1k gold lead, I think with one extra wave, he might base late, but he could also get a second item in too. And that wouldn't be too bad. I think JDG could probably delay for him if they wanted to. If they believe it. Worth the time. Big thing. We're going to get chunked out. Big thing here, though. Ruler has a J Crystal Arrow back up. We're about 30 seconds out. I expect when we're a little bit out of objectives for JDG to try to look for picks to make it a 4v5. They haven't gone for it just yet, but leave. Not having flash is something to think about. Yeah, that's the problem. And leave has been targeted quite frequently. There's that base coming out from Ruler, so he should have the Navori Flicker Blades, I'm assuming he's going. Given those components. Phantom Dancer, both build out the same components. So that's a big spike in damage. Very, very powerful. And uh, yeah, JDG in a very good spot to look to contest as those tier items from Cry and from Leave, they're just not there yet, you know? And once they are there, EDG will have a very, very solid shot at 5v5ing, but until then, JDG, this dragon should be theirs as missing. They're looking for the collapse play here as JDG not gonna actually play towards the dragon just yet. They're bringing solo kill up for EDG to mid lane. Very interesting assignments here right now to set us up before this objective, but it looks like JDG are going to try to get a mid push going. Yeah, get mid prior, dip off into fog, 
get vision control. Very rudimentary, but you can come back to the wave again, crash it in, and then you're feeling really good about Arrow's the setup. Up. Arrow is up. Oh, he'll really look at the angle. It. He's yeah, looking for the, the angle down the choke right there. Canavi in missing too. Good Gotta position be to be in. JDG are a bit split here. True Shot Barrage gets blocked out by missing. Solo Kill scared to go in. It's a bit dicey. Strangle Thorn going to be used. ADG have used so many of their tools. They have purchased on them. They're starting up this drag, though. And JDG not once willingly go quiet into the night. Kanavi's in the pit. Kanavi steals it because he's just better. And he's going to go forward for another one. If he gets a kill, gets shut down right after. Now EDG trying to fight their way out of this one. Solo kill and crying. They're fighting tooth and nail at the pit of the dragon. But it's only going to be solo kill left. And Yagao missing a sheer clean him up real good. Yagao, the vibes captain. 07 salute. Such a strong fight from this JDG side. And Kanavi. Icing on the cake. Steals away that dragon. Wins it, like you say, because he's just better. Front to back is kind of how it ends up playing out. And the unfortunate thing really is EDG use practically all of their tools, right? On this exchange, on the front line, it's just pretty lackluster, to be honest with you. And then you get to the point. Dragon gets stolen away. He's just not close enough, JJ, maybe. Get to really say he's right on the edge of smite range. Does obviously get locked down immediately after. Leave is in no man's land, and then all of these concussive blow procs. Very, very, very strong in enabling your gal Sheer and Co to just finish off the rest of those kills. JDG have been an absolute pleasure to watch here in summer, and they have been just surgical with how they're eliminating teams so far. They did lose that one game to Teeth. It feels like we've seen dominant game after dominant game. It's not just one position, it's all of them. It's when Gear subs in, it, it feels like nothing is different. This team is functioning like a machine right now. And speaking of, maybe a machine oh. that walks into bushes unaware. <laughs> and Ruler, <laughs> I cast a curse JDG from hell there. And Ruler will go down the lead. That's actually really big as well. Yeah, leave definitely Definitely wanted some of that gold back. A lot of plays have gone ruler's way. It's been the assist up in a lot of them. And two items are now online. Like, that's the crucial thing. For Cry and for Lee, for EDG. Mm hmm. Is that those second items are here? And actually, even solo kills very quickly. I'm feeling. It feels quite silently acquired that Sundered Sky as well. Does your so trophy look smaller, though, when you look over at Yagao and he's on three items? Hmm. I don't think so. I, I think, because you have to remember, look, 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 I'm just like being realistic. Obviously, the the bottom line is items change how your champion functions. Mm -hmm. Kraken Slayer, Navori, Lord Doms, very, 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 very cheap for, uh, you know, in comparison to the Triforce build path. So, mm -hmm. look, not only is a gal very, very accelerated, but he's also, you know, very much building cheaper items. That said, doesn't make him a weak champ. Arrow. As the arrow. Ooh. Ooh. Not able to hit on point. Ruler has a found block on just yet. Wink has been consistent in big ground entrances. False engage there by EDG, but they've gotten a full engage by Solo Kill, who goes over for a double counter strike, but gets immediately taken out of the fight. EDG, they're turning tail and running, but JDG, they're going to rip him right back. That Strangle Thorn able to separate a little bit more. The resets were not there just yet. Leave tanking a spear to the dome there, but EDG find a way to fight their way out of that when only losing Solo Kill and maybe weak. Okay, he's not dead. Just about squeaks his way out of it. Yeah, EDG, I mean, it's not a bad idea. They just don't don't find the execution, unfortunately, for themselves. And I think one solo kill is just one shot. Again, wink solo kill, they have to they have to kind of be on In this instance, they're on two different flank angles. Trying to pincer in JDG, but this composition, it's so hard to lock down. Cassante is such a strong peeler. Braum speaks for himself. Ash Tristana on top of that to just play off of all of that front line, play off of all of that peel with some Nidalee Hills to boot. So hard to lock this team down. Very clear intentions 
by G right now. They're about to have a soul point if they get this next dragon. They're already moving vision down that way and trying to get priority in mid lane, just putting all their bodies down towards this bottom side of the map and hovering in between. Yeah, exactly. And that's where, again, you know, Ruler on this Ash gets really scary because he's able to dip off into Fog of War, send out those arrows on the vision that they've laid as traps, and then they get to play off them oh really easily. God. Is he going to get him? He's going to commit the death. Oh, the last turret shot. We get the solo bolo trade down in bot side. Now it's a 4v4. All right. JDG. Mm -hmm. It's just mid laner for mid laner, so they're still going to be going at it back and forth in this mid lane. Still, again, looking for Ruler, looking for those arrows. But it's that dragon that's up in a few <laughs> seconds. Uh, Lethal Fish was in. Engage from JDG, and he does just that. Now we're moving over to the draft for Kanavi. He should just start that one up, and that'll give Soul Point over to JDG. Pings over by EDG onto the Baron side of the map, but I don't think they could start this one out without a contest from JDG. They're going to try to move forward onto missing in mid lane. But I, I, it's dicey. It's Braum. Too tanky. That dragon's going to go down. Third dragon, Chemtech. And I'll be honest, Chemtech? It's one of the few times I'll say Soul's going to be really annoying to deal with. As a. Uh, missing. Yeah. Taking a Ruler lot has here. it. We're always just he kind of on our edge of our buddy. seats here. And that's kind of the problem. Great shield by missing. I feel like we're watching golf or cricket or something, you know, like <laughs> low intensity. Looking for the shots. Like high intensity, low energy. You, you gotta really, gotta really get your soul into so it. Quickly, because one big yeah. spear, one arrow, all of a sudden you're going in for JDG. A little bit of poke goes the right way for EDG, and you find a lot of frontal engage there with their compositions. I also want to highlight that we're getting to three items for majority members here very, very soon. Uh, and we're actually gonna take a look. To that solo bolo trick butt side. Yeah, so it takes a couple of towel shots because he detonates the explosive That's charge. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, he just accepts it. Yeah. But it's 750 gold going into Corky's back pocket, True. which gives him Lord Doms. I don't know. I don't know how worth that trade is <laughs> at the end of the day, but I'm sure it felt good for your gal in the moment. It's one of those things. As a, yeah, EDG, in all fairness, they've done a really good job of locking down control around this Baron. Just about whether or not they can stye up, and I mean, I will say, double AD carry, not the fastest ADs to take down a Baron, mind you, but Zyra? I mean, not too shabby, right? It's definitely a very easy to make happen play. Just about whether or not they'll be afforded the time EDG. They don't know that ruler's gone back to base, but he's picked up a bloodthirst yeah, up. Makes huge. a whole bunch of sense into this poke. Thought maybe they might look mid on the leave since they were collapsing with Sheer. They don't end up pulling the trigger. I think they're feeling a lot more reserved with the Enchanted Crystal Arrows now. Not immediately on point, getting sent every single time. And uh, I think that actually is helping EDG feel a lot more confident on the map. Yeah. I think just the slowing down of the pace. From JDG's point of view, I'm not sending out the Ash Arrows as frequently. It's just kind of given EDG a little bit of space to breathe, right? To <laughs> missing and some of this right now. But missing, yeah. Doing his best Hillisung impression. Playing a pill champion, stepping into the face of the enemy. Creating space, if I may. Oh. Sheer. He's got the angle. improved blast cone if he wants to cut the distance there, but actually not going to go for it just yet. EDG just trying to maintain posture here in the topside jungle of EDG. On this red buff, maybe. Fire over anything he can. It's a bit of a dangerous choke to fight in, though, against the Zyra. Kanavi wins the flip. Doesn't Prime even pay for it with his life. They're going to try to catch them out as they leave, though. TP immediately turns EDG around. There will be a deeper TP by Solo Kill. Do they know? Their health bars don't I really don't enable know. this, though. Oh. Yeah, Solo Kill can't do it. Yeah. It 
was a good TP in the sense of they didn't know oh. he was there, but now this is a bit problematic. That minion is faster oh. than solo kill. Oh, oh the no. arrow, that's all the way from distance, so he literally can't do anything. And Ruler, once again, setting the bar of measurement here in the LPL, and it goes straight into the Baron play by JDG. JDG also needs to pay that one caster minion a bit more shit. You're What's a little bit for? deep here. <laughs> Definitely a, a little bro <laughs> moment to get the big bros, the Baron, but Yagal maybe trying to join his little bro in death is going to back out in the end. So four Baron capes available by JDG as they make the big plays. My, my, my. You know what? Shit, Shit's Sarge, but he's like the quickly promoted two sergeant who's in that squad of you know, the bucket helmet highly... doesn't fit quite as, as perfectly, <laughs> you know, he's, the equipment's a little loose. You know, he did something when he was a private, got promoted quickly. Now he's in the special task force and he feels a little bit, you know, don't want to say outclassed, but he's got a lot of experience around him. And he just wants to prove himself a little bit. That's what that play was, unfortunately for him. I like the die. reverse doesn't get to cast no the TP here, okay. by the way. Yeah, it's pretty funny, eh? I mean... Looks for the TP, they never see him, and then, yeah, unfortunately, War Top's over. Look at this minion! Look at that second minion. It's just <laughs> it's just faster than him, and then it allows for this Ash Arrow to hit. Because he's probably so tunnel-visioned on trying to leap strike to that minion. That uh, he's not focused on the arrow. That ends up connecting onto him. Another one between the goalposts, but I mean... Can't fault him for trying, he's hit so many this game. See, he's using the maps. So well there, missing if they use the Blast Cone out. Does get a little bit of poke damage on the back end. Kanavi also going to eat a bunch from leave. Dragon gets started up by JJ. Does it very quickly here. JDG really not in position to punish, but maybe the fight after. EDG trying to exit. They're getting caught on the death wall here. And now they're caught between a rock and a hard place. And that's uh -oh. a Kasate with a triple knockback there into the wall. Big all out bringing Wink right back to the team. And that's one kill away by JDG. They will not throw any further, but they're going straight down mid lane with this Baron buff. Exactly. They'll get an inhib for this at least. EDG have to reset, and it's slow resets for all of them. Good fight for JDG. Good angle from Sheer. Redeemed himself a little bit. I mean, that death for Baron earlier, it's technically worth anyway, but just doing another fantastic job. Locking down multiple members, peeling Wink off of the back line to stop any potential follow-up. Really good stuff from the young prospect God. for JDG. Three-man path makeup. Would have been. JJ, of course, it's had the two, back yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Pulls Wink out of his team. Good stuff from him. Good angle. Crying. Sharon has to be flashed away from. Yeah, that's actually really big. Crying very low, but missing the tank up a ton. That unbreakable now. Leave needing to be the damage source here for EDG, but they haven't scaled up fast enough. They're on those four items, but it might not just be enough, or at least close to four items for the major carries here of EDG. But against the top, it feels like you can't really do much as the Ezreal. Your poke does not stick. And Crying's health bar is not sticking either. But EDG, they have one last desperate play on the Kanavi, who's out positioned right now. Going to flash right back to his team. And he is just fine. GD, JDG themselves get a top lane inhib as well as that mid inhib. And we'll make it out like bandits. All right. Small, small daylight robbery. But uh, Just when you're this bit. far ahead, when you're this far ahead, you know, like, what's going to stop you? Sheer, by the way, interesting purchase from him. Zeke's Convergence. I'm not sure how many times I've seen it on Cassante, but we're starting to see it a little bit more on some of these mm -hmm. frontliners that, you know, when they pop their ult, they want to be in melee range. And it's kind of bleeding into some of these solo lane builds, like the Cassante, like the Renekton, like Zac, right? These by the time you kind of at this mark in the game you're starting to turn into a bit of a lower economy champion right zeke's just kind of fits the bill right? yeah. you empower one of your ad's and you also empower yourself by slowing people around you once you cast it really strong i am we also now double fourth items for ruler and Gal. the enchant crystal arrow up and jp on tempo for a play here they are moving down for bot side the only remaining in the left and they only have a couple turrets to crack that one open. Not bad. JDG just going by the books here. 
Ash Arrow, like you say, still up and available. No Banshees on GRG, deep TP, TP. TP, TP. Is this the play? Can EDG make it happen again? A defense for memory here. They go for the double counter strike. They get it. Now Yagao is just free firing over the wall here. And JDG might have just done it missing, blocking so much damage. Solo kill going for the play, but he gets booster shot it out of there. Now it's all sheer moving forward. Might just trade his life for it, but look at the flank by JDG. A beautiful oh, spear man. by Kanavi takes the life of JJ and there will no be a defense from EDG. That's JDG making a mark on game number one. And oh, we wanted to look at Kanavi versus JJ, and Kanavi came out on top, top time again. A 1 0 lead and a potential dashing of the hopes of EDG. JDG do it meticulously and leave very few moments in that game where you thought to yourself, EDG have a solid shot at coming back into it. Really well played by JDG. Very, very hard to deal with, pretty much. Yeah. Throughout a majority of that game, they played at such a, a huge range as well. And I can only really credit Ruler for such fantastic Ash Arrows that set up. I can't even count on one hand, Dude, really, how many insane. plays JDG were able to take off the back of it. It's insane when this guy gets that pick. It's just absolutely crazy. Now, luckily, it's fearless, so he won't get it again. Little side note, solo kill looks absolutely defeated after that one. Hope he can kind of bring it back backstage. The body language can be key here for EDG. We'll see what